Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa usalli wa usallimu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen, nabiyyina wa habibina wa qurrati a'yunina Muhammad ibn Abdillah, alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi afdalu salati wa atamu taslim amma ba'd. As always, we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector, and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters in Islam, Insha'Allah, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on At-Tawakkul. Allahu Akbar. Because At-Tawakkul is a beautiful but yet missing element from most of our lives. The bulk of us, including myself, this element is missing from our lives. It is indeed the missing piece to solve the jigsaw puzzle to bring about peace, serenity, happiness in our lives. Allahu Akbar. Because if we look around, perhaps people, youngsters who are worried about their futures, people who are worried about their jobs, people who are looking for spouses, and other endeavors in their lives, tawakkul is the solution. In other words, keeping trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, placing complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At-tawakkul is to use all means possible, all means possible to the best of your abilities, whilst keeping trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving the final outcome in the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what at-tawakkul is all about. So if an individual were to stay at home sleeping, and say, I trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and money should f- fall from the heavens, then we say that is not a tawakkul. A tawakkul is to use all means possible to the best of your abilities. You should try really hard and leave the final outcome in the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah the Almighty knows what is best for us. Because you see, a tawakkul from the same roots stems the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Wakil, Allahu Akbar. Al-Wakil and At-Tawakkul stem from the same root. Al-Wakil is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which can be translated as the trustee or the best disposer of affairs. Some scholars have also translated it as the protector, the preserver, the advocate, all of these are translations to the name Al-Wakil. But for us to understand it better, some scholars have given a beautiful example, a beautiful analogy in regard to that. But before we go into that example, we would like to say, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we talk about examples to try to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say that Allah the Almighty is, <coughs> is high above all examples. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is high above all examples, the most high, the most perfect, Jalla Jalalu Azza wa Jal. But for us to understand, for our weak minds to understand, we use analogies, we use examples so that it becomes easier for us to understand. So to understand the concept of At-Tawakkul, I would like to quote the example of a power of attorney. I think most of us, know what a power of attorney is or who a power of attorney is. A power of attorney is a person whom you give certain rights to execute on behalf of you. Now there are two types of power of attorneys. We have a specific or a limited power of attorney who is a person 
who has been given only specific powers and specific responsibilities. Say for example in regard to one particular meeting, you can't make it to that meeting, you can appoint somebody as a specific power of attorney or a limited power of attorney to execute decisions in regard to that meeting alone. So he, that person is known as a specific or a limited power of attorney. On the other hand, the second type of, of power of attorney is the general power of attorney. He is a person who has been given all rights and all responsibilities on behalf of an individual. He can make any decision. Basically, wherever you sign on the dotted line, he also can sign on that dotted line. He can make important decisions in regard to your life. Say, for example, even pulling the plug from your life support machine. Even a decision like that can be made by a general power of attorney. So, naturally, a general power of attorney will be a person whom you trust 100% because he has access to your bank accounts, to your properties, he can do online transactions on behalf of you. Like I said, wherever you sign, he can sign. So this is the difference between a limited or a specific power of attorney and a general power of attorney. Now let me ask you all a question. Have we placed our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we applying tawakkul as we do with a limited or a specific power of attorney or a general power of attorney? Have we only placed trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regard to some specific issues in our lives? Or have we completely placed our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like how we would do in regard to a general power of attorney? It is upon us to place complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our whole lives should be permeated with a tawakkul. We should completely lay our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah the Almighty, He is the best disposer of affairs and He knows what is best for us. Now to illustrate the beauty of a tawakkul, I wish to share with you all a story. A story of a great Imam. Imam, a great Imam and a great Qadi. Al-Imam Al-Qadi Abu Bakr. Muhammad ibn Abdul Baqi al Ansari, a great Imam, a, an illustrious Islamic personality. He was a person who the books of history have adorned the pages with stories and anecdotes from his lives to teach us lessons. This story that I'm going to mention, it is mentioned in the book Gems and Jewels, which has been published by Darus Salaam Publishers. This story is a story which he himself narrates. This Imam, he himself writes this story about himself. He says, when I was young, I was a student. I was a student of knowledge and I was in Mecca. I was in Mecca seeking knowledge. And I was under a lot of financial stress because I was working simultaneously while, as I was studying. But then I lost my job. I lost my job and due to that, I was hard up for money and I had to uh, even sell some of my things, come out of the house I was staying and I ended up even selling my most valuable possessions, my books, Allahu Akbar. He even had to sell his books to survive. And then after selling his books, he found out that he'll have to discontinue his studies and that one fine day, he was sadly walking down the streets of Mecca contemplating what to do. He was thinking, should I leave Mecca and perhaps try moving somewhere else and try to continue seeking knowledge. Whilst he was contemplating this, as he was passing the masjid, Masjid al-Haram, he suddenly sees a pouch on the ground. He sees a pouch on the ground, the, a, a, a velvet pouch. He sees the pouch and he goes and he takes the pouch. The pouch is a beautiful pouch with a, a silk thread tied on it. He took the pouch and he put it in his pocket because he found it on the ground. And he goes home and opens the pouch. The sight that greets him basically dazzles him. Allahu Akbar. It is a beautiful pearl necklace which was inside the pouch. He takes the necklace outside. Each pearl is of a symmetrical size and it is strung on a, uh, on a, on a silk thread. Beautiful necklace. The minute he saw the necklace, his spirits lifted because he knew for sure he could sell that necklace easily in Mecca for 50,000 dinars. So he was happy. But then his conscience kicked in. And then he realized there must be an owner to such a valuable possession. And 
as he was walking down the streets of Mecca, he was a person who had unwavering tawakkul. Allahu Akbar. He put all of his affairs in the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he thought, if this belonged to someone, it is haram for me to even think of it. Even in the situation I am in, let me place my trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he decides to go find the owner. He retraces his steps back to the place where he picked up the pouch. And when he went there, he saw a bit of a commotion. People had gathered and there was this elderly man looking for something. And then he realized this person must be the owner. He went by him and he overheard the conversation. The old man was looking for a necklace. Allahu Akbar. He goes by the old man, he taps him on the shoulder and he says, can you come with me uncle? And he takes him. The old man very silently follows him. He takes him to his home and then he says, in the morning I came across a necklace. But, and I, I, I see that you are also looking for a necklace. But before I give it to you, I want to confirm your ownership. So can you please describe that necklace for me? The old man not only describes the necklace, he even describes the pouch, he describes the thread that was used to tie it, he describes the pearls, every single detail, he describes it perfectly. So in the end, the Imam decides that this necklace has to be his and he hands over the necklace. Now this old man, he had already, whilst he was looking for it there, he had offered a reward for the person who brings his necklace. He had offered 500 dinars as a reward. Now this Imam, Imam Abu Bakr, otherwise he was also known as Qadi Al-Maristan. Qadi Al-Maristan, I forgot to mention that. So he had also heard that and he was looking forward to that reward of 500 dinars because that is going to be purely halal for him and he thought at least I could use that money. But now the minute he gave the necklace to the old man, the old man now extends the reward to him. And then the Imam thinks, you know, what have I actually done to deserve this money? I haven't done any hard work. I just came across the necklace and how can I take 500 dinars? It's not right upon me. So he says, you know what? I can't take that money from you. I'm sorry, I can't take that money from you. He refuses to take the money from the man. The man keeps forcing him to take it, but he says, no, I can't take it until finally the old man gets up and leaves. So after some time, Imam Abu Bakr, he decides to leave Makkah because he finds life very difficult in Makkah. So he takes, uh, he undertakes a ship journey to another location to try and, and, and seek knowledge in that particular place. Whilst he was journeying on the, on the sea, a storm hit that particular ship and, the, and they were shipwrecked. They were shipwrecked and he was struggling in the sea, clinging onto a piece of driftwood for many days until finally he was washed ashore on a deserted island. When he was washed ashore on that particular island, after some time people came up to him and carried him, took him to the masjid, revived him, gave him food and after some time he gained consciousness. And when he gained consciousness, the first thing that he saw was the minaret of the masjid and he was happy at least I've been washed ashore on an island where I have brethren of the same faith ie Muslims so after some time he because he was in the masjid he started praying in the masjid he started conducting salawat in the masjid and, and, and teaching the people there the minute the people found out that he knew how to recite the Quran beautifully they started asking him to teach their children and they began to shower him with gifts Allahu Akbar result of tawakkul but the story doesn't end there now after some time there were books in the masjid he started reading those books aloud and when the people found out that he could read and write they started showering him with more gifts to teach their children to read and write Allahu Akbar and now what happened after some time the, 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 the town's people, they go to him and they say, Oh great Imam, we wish to offer you something. Now, this was a tactic. They wanted to keep him with them. So they said, there is this one particular orphan girl. There is this one particular orphan girl. We wish that you should marry her so that you can settle down. And she is beautiful. She is beautiful in terms of mental and physical beauty. Because she is a well-mannered, very pious girl and we feel that you should marry her. So he agrees to that and he, uh, the nikah is done, the nikah is done and then on the night of the wedding when he goes to enter the room of the girl, the minute he enters the room, he enters with 
uh, with, the, with, the, with the leader of that particular island, the minute he entered the room and when he saw the girl, yes, she was of an amazing beauty, but then his eyes were riveted on one particular object and that was the pearl necklace which was strung around her neck. The same pearl necklace that he had given that old man in Mecca. He was basically astounded and his eyes were riveted on the necklace. The, the person who went with him said, Oh Imam, this is your wife. And we also know that the necklace is also beautiful. This wife also belongs to you and the necklace also belongs to you. So you can gaze all you want afterwards. And then he says, but there is an amazing story to that necklace. And then he tells him the story of the old man going all the way to Mecca. And then he tells him that he lost the necklace. And he tells him that the old man, when he came back, he was telling us of this young man, of this honest young man who came up and gave the necklace and even refused to accept the reward in regard to that. And he used to pray. This man is telling the young man, that that old man used to pray very sincerely, Ya Allah, please bring that young man to me and please unite him with my daughter. Allahu Akbar. And then he went on to say, but amazing is the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know where that young man is, but this girl has been written for you, O Imam. The minute he said that, the Imam started weeping and started crying. And then he went on to tell him of the story where he had collected the necklace and he had returned the necklace and he was the young man who refused the reward and sent the man away. This other Imam was amazed. The leader was amazed. He just kept quiet and left the place. The story doesn't end there. After some time, Imam Abu Bakr, his wife passes away. His wife passes away and the necklace is inherited by the Imam and his two children. He had two children. After some time, even the two children pass away and then the Imam alone inherits that necklace and afterwards he sells it for a hundred thousand dinars and he devotes his life completely to the seeking of knowledge and the dissemination of knowledge. Allahu Akbar. What I wish to highlight, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, is that if he had taken the necklace without placing his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 50,000 dinars would have been haram. But then he placed his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he returned it back, he did what was halal, and Allah the Almighty brought it back to him in a much beautiful way, completely halal. This is the beauty of tawakkul. So let us all place tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is the best disposer of affairs. Let us place all our affairs in the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah the Almighty will bring about things for us in utmost beauty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins and may He the Almighty accept our good deeds and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us here tonight with our beloved Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhir da'wayah الحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org/donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links.